callers and are not necessarily those of KKNW, its management, or other advertisers. This program is sponsored by Dr. Pat Vasily and Transformation Talk Radio. You're listening to an encore presentation from the Transformation Talk Radio Network. The vibration of change, that magical place where life shifts from struggle to ease, from stagnation to forward movement, from old ways of being to new ways of becoming. Yes, it can seem rather elusive to get there, but when you are in it, you feel it down to your very core, and it can positively affect everything in your life, from your relationships to your health and well-being, from your career path to your abundance, from the quality of your inner connection to the fullness of your self-expression. Here on The Christine Upchurch Show, we explore ways to get into that vibration of change with experts in the fields of consciousness, psychology, spirituality, health, healing, and science. Are you ready to step into your vibration of change? Hello, everybody. Welcome. If you're joining us live, you might be listening on 1150 AM KKNW here in the Seattle area or on Transformation Talk Radio anywhere around the world. Or if you're listening to one of the, I think it's 90 different places this ends up after the fact, including ChristineUpchurch.com, you're going to be really happy you joined us whenever and wherever you're, you're, you're listening from. Because we have a VIP, and I tell you, I've already been hearing from people and seeing stuff in social media. People are excited about this guest, and he's been here before, but I'm not going to say who that is quite yet, because I like to tease He's him. a big kahuna. Let's just say he, that. He's he the big kahuna in the work. Offering something yeah. very yeah. real, mm-hmm. very measurable, and extremely transformational. Um, but before we get into that, I wanted to say hello to you, and thank you, Benny, for doing all your magic, your technological magic. Hi there. Welcome. And uh, a big shout-out and big kahuna to you, too, being a mom. Oh, Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. A little early. Thank Your you. boys are very proud, I'm sure. I, I don't know. I mean, I've got a 17 year old at this point, but. Um, he does. Yeah. He I, does. I, I know they love me, and I, I definitely love them, and I, I love being a mom. Um, and I did want to mention something. I, I have to apologize to listeners. Uh, I know I made an announcement several weeks ago that I'm doing a TEDx talk in the Philly area, Philadelphia area here in the U.S., and um, I, you know, told people they could go get tickets. Well, apparently. An organization, one organization has bought out the entire auditorium, and it's by invitation only. So I apologize if you've tried to get tickets. And let me tell you, it'll eventually be up on YouTube, and you'll get it for free. So, so there's a win-win there. There is you'll a win You'll still get to see you on stage doing your thing. You're a little hesitant, aren't you? <laughs> like, You're looking at me It's so that. permanent. It's so permanent. <laughs> it is kind of permanent. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be fine. Oh. You know, I'm so excited about our guest today. Um, we are talking about... Dr. Joe Dispenza, and oh, gosh, I met Joe oh, seven or eight years ago, and it was the sort of thing where I, I felt this great connection because he's not only incredibly intelligent and knows the science, but he connects it with the, the spirituality. He connects it with the higher frequency vibration, and he is expanding lives in amazing ways. Uh, he's an international lecturer. He's a researcher, a corporate consultant, an author, and an educator, and he's been invited to speak in more than, get this, 32 countries on five continents. He's educated thousands of people, detailing how they can rewire their brains and recondition their bodies to make lasting changes. He's a faculty member at various places, Quantum University, the Omega Institute, Kripalu, and um, he's also an invited chair of the research committee at Life University in Atlanta, Georgia. He's a researcher, a chiropractor, a New York Times bestselling author, uh, several books he, he's written, um, You Are the Placebo, Making Your Mind Matter, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, How to Lose Your Mind and Create a New One, and Evolve Your Brain, The Science of Changing Your Mind, and his more recent book, Becoming Supernatural, How Common People Are Doing the Uncommon. I'd like to welcome our guest today, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Hi, Joe. Hi, Christine. It's a pleasure to be with you. You know, Joe... Um, there are a lot of people who are feeling stuck right now, people with chronic illness, people who ha- are in difficult relationships, people who are struggling financially. Uh, there's a lot of struggle going on, and I think there are more and more people who are feeling victimized. Do people need to stay in that place? Hmm. Well, it's an interesting conversation because if you think about what a victim is, and, and there's level to it. I mean, on some level, we're all victims. The bottom line about being a victim to our environment, to and what is our environment made of? People and objects and things and places and experiences that we, you know, we embrace with our senses. Uh-huh. 
if you're not being defined by a vision of the future, more than likely you are left with the old memories of your past. Now, the reason that is is because your brain is organized to reflect everything you know in your life. Your brain is a record of the past. So when people are stuck, they wake up in the morning and they start thinking about their problems. And those problems are basically memories from the past. Uh -huh. So as they start to think about their problems, they're already thinking in the past. And every single memory has an emotion attached to it. Sure. So if thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body, and how you think and how you feel creates your state of being, most people start their entire day from a, uh, a state of being in the past. So then mm. their familiar past will be a predictable future. So then the moment they get up and they see the same people and they do the same things, they go to the same places at the exact same time, now it's the environment that's controlling how they think and feel. And mm -hmm. that's a victim. So then you say, why are you so unhappy? Why are you so angry? Why are you so frustrated? Why are you so confused? And a person will say, I am this way because of some circumstance in my life. Sure. Which means now their personal reality is creating their personality instead of their personality creating their personal reality. There are mm -hmm. ways uh, to break that, uh, break that cycle. Most people, though, love to wait for, for it to get really bad before they decide to change. Sure, yeah. You typically crisis mode before people change. Yeah, that's, that's when you no longer feel like yourself. And when you no longer feel like yourself, this is the awakening moment because oh. now you can see yourself through the eyes of someone else. You can become aware of your unconscious thoughts. You can pay attention to what you say and how you act, and you can observe how you're feeling. And when you do that, you're no longer in the program. You're now consciousness observing the program, and that's how we begin to objectify our subjective self. That's how we begin the process of change. That, that neuroscience is called metacognition. I love that concept, that, that the crisis makes us not view ourselves in the same way and, and how that is actually a, that deconstructing is actually very constructive or has the potential to be constructive. But there's, a, there's an alternative. I mean, we can change in a state of pain and suffering or we can change in a state of joy and inspiration sure. by the same means. If you wake up every morning and you're defined by a vision of the future and you become so passionate about that future that you begin to emotionally embrace it, well... If you're truly in the present moment, your brain and body don't know the difference between the experience in your life that's creating the emotion or creating the moment, sure. or you're doing that by thought alone. So in a moment, you're changing your state of being, and from an elevated state of being, you could also become aware of the old self, but instead of from a limited state, from a more unlimited state. And, and that's what I hope the new model of change will ultimately become. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so give us an example of somebody who shifts into seeing um, their past as a, a potential to expand and change, as opposed to recontinuing re the, um, the same old, same old. Well, I mean, let's face it. I mean, we're creatures of habit. Everybody knows that. And most people are, you know, they, they wake up in the morning and they go through the same exact routine. You know, mm -hmm. they have, they, they, their, their body is following their mind to the toilet, to the to the coffee maker, to the shower, to work, uh, to, the, to the laundry mat. Their, their body is always following their mind, but it's following it to a known. And if you keep doing that over and over again, people lose their free will to a program, but there's no unseen hand doing it. So then when it gets so bad where you can predict the feeling of everything that's going on in your life, uh -huh. that means then you're stuck. Okay. And if you're viewing your life through the same circuitry and the same emotions, you're actually viewing your future through the lens of the past. And this is where it gets difficult because people will say there's possibilities and, and no new information can enter your nervous system that isn't equal to the emotion you're experiencing. So, mm -hmm. so then a person has a tragedy, a crisis, a, a drama, some betrayal, and all of a sudden now they become aware that they have to change. Now, going from the old self to the new self, uh, there's a, a river we have to cross and, and, the hardest part about change is not making the same choice as you did the day before. Now, mm -hmm. here's the caveat. The moment you decide to make a different choice, you better get ready because it's going to feel uncomfortable. Yes. It's going to feel unfamiliar. There's going to be some uncertainty. And more importantly, you're not going to be able to predict the next moment. You've just left the known, right. and now you're in the unknown. Now, most people, when they get in that place, their body has emotionally been conditioned to be the mind. So the body says, well, I'd rather suffer 
I'd rather feel guilty, I'd rather feel unworthy than take a chance and possibility. It's the body then that begins to influence the mind. Uh-huh. And this is where people get in trouble because the voices that they hear in their head that says, start tomorrow, you'll never change, you're too much like your mother, this doesn't feel right. That's the body influencing the mind. And if we listen to those voices, those thoughts as if they're true, those same thoughts lead to the same choices, which lead to the same behaviors, which mm. create the same experiences, which produce the same emotions. And then everybody says, well, you know, this feels right. Well, actually, no, it feels familiar. So right. going right. from the old self to the new self, the technology is then, what thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? What behaviors do you want to demonstrate? The act of closing your eyes and rehearsing your actions begins to install the neurological hardware in your brain. Now, now your brain is no longer a record of uh, of the past, now it's a map to the future. Uh-huh. And if you keep doing it enough times, that hardware will become a software program. And who knows? You just might start thinking like a happy person while you install uh-huh. the circuit. You might start acting more unlimited because you rehearsed it. And, and then if you can teach your body emotionally what that future will feel like before it's made manifest, this is the key. That so, means then you don't wait for your healing to feel wholeness or gratitude. The moment you start feeling wholeness and gratitude, your healing begins. And if you keep doing that enough time, it'll become more natural and more familiar, and you'll recondition your brain and body to the future instead of the past. Wow. So inherent in this approach is that you have to be able to envision some sort of possibility. Do you find that some people have a hard time sort of thinking out of the box? You know, I don't, I don't think it's hard to think out of the box. I think we become so memorized in certain emotional states that we don't even know we feel guilty. We don't even know we feel unhappy. It's just how we feel. Uh-huh. Now, the challenge is, if you can't think greater than how you feel, or feelings have become the means of thinking, right. if feelings and emotions are a record of the past, then you can't think greater than your past, and that's the challenge. So then you've got to teach people then how to, how to find the present moment, and that's the first thing we do in our workshops. We show people that when you're truly in the present moment, there's so many possibilities exist, that exist, and it, it requires a will that's greater than the program. It requires becoming more passionate and about being present and romancing those emotions. And every time your body wants to feel an emotion and you return it back to the present moment, you're telling your body it's no longer the mind. You're the mind. That's the liberation of energy. And that's available energy that people can use to heal their body or design in the future. This is fascinating. We have to go to a quick break, but stay tuned to learn more about Becoming Supernatural with Dr. Joe Dispenza. snooze button habits for good with the soul stretching sisters on the i am power hour with me terry j walker and me dr pat on transformation talk radio.com pump up your spiritual muscle as we share stories aspire higher and live a whole lot larger to help you unleash your powered up pumped up i am soul stretching success anything can happen when we take to the airways and all things become possible during the i am power hour Are you done being afraid to jump into the life that's waiting for you? Are you ready for a real shift? I invite you to tune in every Tuesday with me, Tracy L, on the Tracy L. Clark Show, where we will teach you how to live your extraordinary life. At 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where I will provide the tools and the steps needed to help you transcend perceived limitations and move forward with an extraordinary life. For more information, visit me at TracyLClark.com. Did you know that when we talk about the Earth's ecosystems, the most important ecosystem has been left out? You, we created the ecosystem approach to recapture human potential. Find us at theecosystemapproach.org. Join us every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time and 4 p.m. Eastern Time for the Ecosystem Approach Show with Jason and Patricia on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hello, I'm Carrie Kadambi, and this is your Spirited Exchange Moment. Have you been searching everywhere for answers? Do you long for wise guidance to lovingly direct you? Guess what? You have your very own divine spirit guides in the highest light, available 24-7, just waiting to help you live your best life. Call in your spirit guidance on a daily basis to help you make important decisions. 
all you have to do is ask with a sense of openness, curiosity, and willingness to be divinely guided. Throughout your day, be open to notice what shows up for you. A spoken phrase, a book, a message from a song, or simply a knowing. And always offer gratitude for that loving guidance, and don't forget to put it into action. Join me on Transformation Talk Radio for my show, A Spirited Exchange. For more information about me, visit thedivineguidancegift.com. Divine Transmissions Radio with host Lisa Marie. Tune in every Thursday at 2 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com, where Lisa Marie, Shakti Ma, helps you to reach deeper levels of the self and create a powerful space of healing, learning, and transcendence. Divine Transmissions Radio. For more information, visit ShaktiMa.net. That's S-H-A-K-T-I-M-A.net. You're listening to an encore presentation from the Transformation Talk Radio Network. We're talking to Dr. Joe Dispenza today, and Joe, you talked about a little bit about the nuts and bolts of what we need to do to shift our future. And I just want you to give people a taste of what those possibilities are like because you've got some amazing stories of when people have employed your methods, when they've been in your seminars, the kinds of transformations that have occurred are just absolutely mind-boggling. Well, sure. I mean, uh, for me personally, uh, as I said when we were talking on the break, uh, I'm witnessing things in our workshops that that I thought I'd never see in my lifetime. And, And I consider myself a somewhat open-minded person, uh-huh. and uh, I'm, I, I'm I'm amazed because uh, the, the science of what is possible has to catch up with what what people are capable of doing, and we we should, you know, I've come to the conclusion we should never let science give us permission to do the uncommon. We should Ooh. do the uncommon and do it repeatedly, and then have science come and measure us. And that's kind of where my passion has lied. That's uh, that's really profound, years. Joe. That is really profound. Say, please say that one more time, because it's worth everybody hearing this. Let me see. I said uh, we should never wait for science to give us permission to do the uncommon. Uh-huh. If we do, we make it another ism, another uh-huh. religion, another something. Right. We should go out and do the uncommon and do it consistently, and, uh, and then have science come and study us and upgrade their laws. And mm-hmm. and, and uh, so... Um, what, what I what I am I I think this is a time in history, Christine, where it's not enough to know. Mm-hmm. I think this is a time in history to know how, and I think information is so readily available that you don't need an authority, you don't need a priest, you don't need a doctor, you don't need a governor, you don't you don't need a, you don't need a specialist uh, uh, to gain information anymore. It's information because of technology makes us more conscious, and you can't have consciousness without energy. So the more you are aware of knowledge, the more it changes your very energy. It changes who you are. And if enough people doing that around the world, uh, there's a change in consciousness and there's a, there's a shift in the energy of the planet because now people can access knowledge. Now, now that change in energy is for them to see a possibility. Uh-huh. The next question is, how do you do it? How do you apply it? How yes. do you personalize it? How do you demonstrate it? How do you modify your behaviors and do something different. If you get an, a new experience, then the experience then awakens you up even more. And now the greater level of awareness that is possible then, all of a sudden and the emotions that come along with that experience begin to teach your body chemically to understand what your mind is intellectually understood. We could say knowledge uh-huh. is for the mind and experience is for the body. And right. Now a person is beginning to embody the truth of that philosophy, that theory, that science, mm-hmm. that knowledge. And if you've done it once, you should be able to do it again. And the repetition of doing it over and over again begins to neurochemically uh, condition the mind and body to begin to work as one. And when the, the body now knows how to do it as well as the mind, it's innate in us. We've mastered the philosophy. It becomes who we are. And so I think going from an, uh, a philosopher to initiate to master, from knowledge to experience to wisdom, from mind, body to soul, uh, from thinking to doing to being is what it's about right now. And, and, and so... In my workshops, I mean, I, I, I very, I'm not interested in 
uh, many keynote uh, presentations or conferences. I, I want to get with a group of people that want to do it. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a doer myself. Yeah. So I give people numerous opportunities to connect. And if you understand the concepts of neuroplasticity or psychoneuroimmunology or neuroendocrinology or uh-huh. quantum model of reality or epigenetics, all of those sciences point the finger at possibility. And that is the contemporary language of mysticism because it begins to demystify the process. So if you can rewire your brain, and you certainly can, and you can condition your body emotionally to a new mind and signal new genes in new ways, and uh, genes to make proteins, and proteins are responsible for the structure and function of your body, and the expression of proteins is the expression of life, and you begin to understand that you can begin to change your genetic expression. And we've measured this. People can do it in four days. I mean, we've We've measured wow. in four days people upregulate genes to diminish cancer growth and tumors, uh-huh. to stimulate stem cells to go to damaged tissues and repair them, the gene for neurogenesis, the, the growth of new neurons in, in response to novel experiences and learning, the immune regulators, the uh, 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 antioxidant uh, 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 um, genes are regulated also, so anti-cancer, anti-aging, anti-heart disease. In four days, people are able to switch on those genes. So it begs the question then, what do I have to do to get there? So when we start giving people numerous opportunities to connect, we give them plenty of time. We start at 6 in the morning, we go to 6 in the evening, and people are not like, oh, gosh, I have to do this. They, they look forward to it. Uh-huh. And if your personality creates your personal reality, and your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel, then the present personality who's listening to this call has created the present personal reality called their life. So then if you want to create a new personal reality, a new life, that means you have to change your personality. Mm -hmm. So then when people begin to realize there's really no out there out there, it's all in here. Mm -hmm. And as they begin to change their thoughts, they change their behaviors, they make different choices, they have new experiences, they feel new emotions. And if they can do that, for a week or an extended period of time, they become a new personality. Now, the beauty behind that is that many times the disease exists in the old personality because the disease was from an onset, from some emotional experience. And Uh when they're changing the emotions from pain and suffering and fear to joy and freedom and inspiration, and they can assign meaning to what they're doing and understand it, it's that intensity of an elevated emotion that's greater than the shock or the betrayal from the past experience, that they can, they can downregulate the gene for the disease and upregulate the gene for health, and they begin to even witness people doing that. Well, sure. we've seen people that have had brain tumors that were, that were clinically deaf get their hearing back and have a very profound mystical experience. Other people come back after the meditation. They have no profound mystical experience, but they don't have to put their, their hearing aids in because they can hear perfectly. We wow. had a woman... In Sardinia, just a couple weeks ago at our advanced week-long retreat in Italy, Uh 5% vision from the time she was born. She was born with a genetic condition. That means that more than likely the gene was signaled in utero. Wow. She was clinically blind. Never saw face, never saw detail, could only see shadows, outlines, and uh, and figures. Comes out uh, after uh, uh, a whole process, and she's looking around and she can see people's faces. She's looking around oh and goodness. she can see the flowers on the stage. In fact, the whole entire event, she thought that two big flower arrangements were two men standing on the stage oh. guarding me. <laughs> and she realized that they were flowers. I mean, wow. just, I mean, this is like a biblical proportion. I mean, this is yeah. like, this is what, what happens when you start interacting with the field of energy and you begin to surrender to love instead of surrender to fear. And, and when people start to witness this, I mean, this is where mirror neurons come in. I mean, you can't go back to business as usual after that. And people, I stood in the audience and looked out. I was standing behind her. Uh And the majority of the crowd was in tears. The reason being is because she was speaking to people's possibility. And she wasn't a movie star. She wasn't beautiful, you know, perfect. She didn't wear nice clothes and look all polished and Uh was, was not thin and slender and all the things that people think you have to be to be whatever. Uh She was just a common person, and people can relate with that, and then they go back into their own work remembering that, and that's what begins to change uh, people's minds, and I I believe that 
just like a disease, you know, an infection spreads amongst the community sure. and creates a disease, I believe that health and wellness can be as infectious as disease. And that becomes that kind of four-minute mile, the break the veneer of in consciousness. And I think it's happening. I honestly it's do. It's so exciting. So, Joe, one of the things you said was um, we need to learn to surrender to love versus surrendering to fear. How does a person go about doing that? Well, I mean, uh, you know, it's really funny. I've been watching. The reason we do week-long workshops, Christine, is because when we were doing our advanced workshops uh, over the last five years where we measured brain, uh, we've measured 8,500 brains. We've measured over 5,000 hearts. We've measured genetic changes. We've measured telomere changes. We've wow. measured immune regulation. We've measured neurohormones. We've measured uh, neurotransmitters. We've measured the energy in the room, the energy around people's bodies, the energy center. We've measured just about anything you could think of. And at the end of those four days, just when people were breaking through, uh -huh. having mystical experiences, uh, all, you know, creating their future, changing their energy, diseases going away, right at four days, I thought, my God, what if we had them for three more days, you know? Uh -huh. So we extended the, the, the events, the week-long events, because I, I think that people, when they really start connecting they want more of it so so it's the first few days of any event is all about overcoming ourselves mm -hmm. and that's the challenge that's sure. how you have to disentangle from the personality and that takes uh, a little bit of work so the first two days there's a lot of uh, taking people outside of their comfort zone and, and allowing them to do the inner work and then they start breaking through and when they start breaking through we teach them how to open their heart we teach them how to sustain that we teach them how to unfold as, um, as an awareness into that infinite field. And they get better and better at it because they're getting closer to the present moment and okay. connecting to right. a field of possibility. Yeah. That makes perfect sense because when you're in the present then, and in surrendering to the present, then you're, you, you can basically ride whatever wave of potential to the next particle form of reality. <laughs> yeah. And what if, what if you connect to that frequency... And its signature, its signature is intelligent love, and it happens to move through your nervous system. We've, we've, we've measured that in a person's brain, and, and we've measured what happens. I mean, you're talking about amplitudes of energy that, that are you know, 200 to 300 standard deviations outside of normal. Wow. It, it doesn't wow. matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how... No, no, you're a statistician. You yeah, understand. Yeah, that's, we're, that's we're like such a huge outlier of what you'd expect. I mean, that, that's incredible. No, no, I, 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 I say it to audiences, and I don't think they get it, but 99.7% of the population falls within three standard deviations above normal and three standard deviations below normal. Uh -huh. That's the big Z curve. Sure. We're talking about 200 more of those deviations, like way outside. I mean, we're talking about energy in the brain that's very rarely measured, in, and we're seeing the same pattern, and that person is having a profound moment. And that moment is so profound, the inner experience that they're having is way more real than any past external experience. And if experience enriches the brain, and it does, and experience produces emotions, we could say that in one second their past is washed away. And as a result of it, the person gets a biological upgrade, and it's sometimes instantaneous. And the closer they are to the connection to that unified field, the faster that the time uh, it happens. This is incredible. We have to go to another quick break for but stay tuned for more with Dr. Joe Dispenza. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. As a former research statistician, my scientific background is what many would call sensible. For more than a decade now, I have been working in the field of energy medicine, facilitating sessions and teaching around the world. People from the mainstream often ask me, how did a sensible woman like you end up working in such an alternative field? Implicit in their question is the underlying assumption that the field of subtle energy, such as energy healing and intuition, isn't sensible. But I believe it is very sensible. Even scientists are able to measure aspects of this. Approaching life from an energetic perspective brings us new opportunity for healing and transformation. And from a practical standpoint, even if you can't rationally explain how something works, if you experience a shift from it, then doesn't it make it pretty sensible? Please visit StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. 
That's 425-999-9836. Are you meeting your sales goals? Or maybe your business plan could use a dose of the divine. Tune in to Divinely Driven Results with faith-based business coach Elise Smith on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Coach Elise Smith helps listeners get unstuck from their business plateau and become empowered through divine guidance. Build up belief in yourself and your dreams and learn business strategies that work for you for real lasting results. Learn more by visiting www.DivinelyDrivenResults.com. The vibration of change. That magical place where life shifts from struggle to ease, from stagnation to forward movement, from old ways of being to new ways of becoming. If you're like I am, it can be rather elusive to get there, but when you are in it, you feel it down to your very core, don't you? And it can positively affect everything in your life, from your relationships to your health and well-being, from your career path to your abundance from the quality of that inner connection to the fullness of your self-expression. On The Christine Upchurch Show, we explore ways to get into that vibration of change with experts in the fields of consciousness, psychology, spirituality, health, healing, and science. Join me, Christine Upchurch, every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on KKNW AM 1150 and Transformation Talk Radio and learn new ways to step into your vibration of change. How to lead a happier life on Miles to Go with Brittany Miles. How to lose to gain it all. Join Brittany every second and fourth Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Listen as coach and healer Brittany Miles shares stories that teach you about surrender. For more information about Brittany, MilesToGoCoaching.com. You're listening to an encore presentation from the Transformation Talk Radio Network. Welcome back to the Christine Upchurch Show here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. You know, if you didn't tune in the first half hour, I just want to let you know. We've got a VIP here, Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's a New York Times bestselling author, and his latest book is, gosh, probably my favorite so far, and they're all great. It's called Becoming Supernatural. You know, Joe, you and I were talking on the break about what you saw just down in Santa Fe, and I want you to repeat that on air because it's just astounding the kinds of results you're seeing. Yeah, Santa Fe was a turning point point, uh, for me personally in my own uh, in my own evolution because um, we had three people that were in wheelchairs uh, for many years you know stand up and step out of their wheelchairs I was I was blown away so was the so was the audience I uh, we had people with canes and crutches you know uh, walking without canes and people with peripheral neuropathy that haven't felt their feet in you know years and, and of course there's no real treatment for it uh, yeah. dancing around the room uh, I mean we're just wow. uh, just crazy it's just and and i have to say that <laughs> i'm probably more surprised than anybody because i said to my staff when we did our debrief they were looking at me and they said what's wrong i said i'm waking up in my dream <laughs> i mean this is my team i'm kind of waking up in this dream that, that that people can do this and it's really blowing my mind so when people go home from these events how do their lives change well i mean integrating uh, a new self into the same environment is really, I think, the art. That is the challenge. That is that is the initiation. Mm-hmm. And I just wrote a blog about this because it's so funny that there's research that's being done that shows that people that are in relationships, not just intimate relationships but with partners, but relationships with friends, with family, with whoever, uh-huh. that when they measure their response to certain people and certain things or to each other, their brain waves actually are very, very similar in their signature, mm-hmm. which means then, you know, if we share the same experiences, uh, we probably share the same neurocircuitry, and if we, we share the same experiences, we share the same emotions, which means we have chemistry. Uh-huh. And so then uh, that works for us if you're with a community of a 1,000 people in an event and everybody's striving to, to, to a greater level and there's a breakthrough, everybody 
changes their brain signature. They changes they change everything. Mm-hmm. Their biology, their neurochemistry, their neurocircuitry, you know, their, their gene expression, their immune response. Now they have to go back in, and their brain is now a different brain than the people that they were once in a relationship with, family and friends or whatever. Now, now this is the key point. There's nothing you have to do except not react to the same people and same conditions in the same way you did. Because the moment you start reacting in the same way, it's more than likely your brain and body are going to return back to a similar signature. Sure. And you're going to be back to the same person in the same personal reality. And that's the, I'm, I'm very proud, Christine, to say that, that the, our community of people, they do the work. I mean, they just they are up every morning doing their meditations. They understand that they got to be greater than their environment. They got to be greater than their body. They got to actually sustain that change in energy for an extended period of time. And and when they start getting this down, and they and they're not giving their power away. I mean, think about this. The stronger the emotional reaction that you have to anyone or anything in your life, mm-hmm. the more you pay attention to the person. Sure. Now, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. Right. So that means we're giving our power away to people and conditions in our life that are disturbing. So then when a person learns how to break free from the chains of those emotions during our events that keep them anchored to the past, and they truly lower the volume to that emotion, that means more than likely they're going to respond less emotionally to the same people and conditions in their life. And that means that's when they belong to their future instead of they belonging to their past. So. It takes practice then to continue to do the work. I mean, you don't have to go to a retreat to do it. You just need to close your eyes and sit alone and, and disconnect from the people and things and places in your life. So put your body down and, and make it stay in one place for a period of time instead of eating or smelling or tasting or feeling. And, and no longer think about the future or the past. And when you do that properly every single day, you're priming your brain and body to be greater than those three elements, your body, your environment, and time. And then when you get up from your meditation, consciously and aware, your job is to maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day. And if you do it properly, you will start to see coincidences, serendipities, the synchronicities, opportunities show up in your life. And this is the key because the question was about victim and when we started this conversation. Uh-huh. The moment you notice the changes that you're making inside of you with the effects you produce outside of you, you're going to pay attention to what you did and you're going to do it again. And that means then you're starting to believe you're more the creator of your life yes. than you are the victim of your life right. because then you'll start saying, Mm-mm, I'm not going to react to that person not because it's the person, but because the moment I react, I'm giving my power to that person. Sure. And that's available energy that I should be using to invest in my future. When people start managing their energy, they start managing their inner states. They're putting more attention on their inner world instead of on their outer world. And it's a 50-50 balance, and, and they're making conscious choices. And, and, and it's not about reacting. Look, I react. The question is how long you react. Yes. That's the real yes. question. So teaching people then how to do that and to stay in that frequency, stay in that energy is the key because after all the years of doing this, I can honestly say that nobody changes. Nobody changes until they change their energy. And when you change uh-huh. your energy, right. you change your life. It's the way it is. And so you just can't do it for 10 minutes and then go back to being a victim and suffering and angry and frustrated. You, you, but there's got to be a vibrational match between your energy and the future experience that you're tuning into. And and when you go back to frustration and patience and resentment, you just disconnected from the energy of your future and you're back to the energy of your past. And don't expect your life to change, right? right. So then I think knowledge kind of giving people the proper information so that they can begin to think about it and embrace it. I, I know now that if you give people the right information and, it, and if we use science as that language, they're making new connections in their brain, but they got to be able to talk about it. So... If they can explain that model to somebody, they're wiring the hardware in their brain in preparation for the experience. And the more they understand the what and the why, the how gets easier. So then if you can set up the conditions in the environment and give people the proper instructions, and if they can get their behaviors to match their intentions and their actions equal to their thoughts, they're going to have a new experience that's going to transform them. 
Mm-hmm. And that's when the transformation then becomes not something intellectual, but something visceral. Right. When you feel it and you notice it and uh, you want more of it, it gets easier every time you do it. And I, and, and I think that that's how we switch from being the victim of our lives to the creator of our lives. And it takes practice. You know, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But we're, we're, we're measuring the evidence and we're witnessing those changes and and uh, we just get story after story uh, every single day of people doing something really uh, su- supernatural. So can you just give us a couple of examples of the, the serendipity, the synchronicities that occur after people go back home to live their lives? Sure, absolutely. Um, we see everything from um, new relationships being uh, formed, uh, you know, meeting the person of their dreams to... Uh, uh, not even trying, getting a call from somebody that uh, they haven't talked to in 10 years that's looking for something that this person had just spent the whole week in creating a new job for. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, like and, then, and then that person experiences that and realizes that's their first client, uh-huh. goes back now. The energy of that experience inspires her to do it again. She does it again. She gets two more clients. She's not going anywhere now uh-huh. to get it you have to understand she's not she's not doing it matter to matter she's sure. not dragging her body through space and forcing or controlling or pushing for outcomes or fighting for outcomes she's actually drawing the experiences to her and then of Love course that. now she needs the money and she says well maybe i don't need money maybe i need opportunity money uh-huh. is just one way and so she starts tuning into opportunity and all of a sudden next thing you know she has a uh, another person called up who she hasn't heard from in 10 years, and he's a professor at UC Irvine, and he's looking for great business ideas, and he wants to uh, flush them out with these graduate students. And he calls her and says, I'll give you five graduate students uh, to build out the whole entire thing. These guys have skills in um, marketing and in resource development, you know, right down the list. And, and, and she shows up every Thursday in these young uh, 20 uh or your 23 and 24 year old kids build the whole thing out for her. They don't do anything. It's, and then, and then they, then they, then there's a Shark Tank at the end of the semester, and uh, she gets two investors. That didn't do anything. She didn't advertise. Oh she didn't do anything. And, and you know, and it just keeps going on. So once you start breaking out, uh, you know, once it starts happening, you you start seeing all kinds of all kinds of crazy stuff happening that are that are the side effect of uh, of change in energy. I love this. Modern day magic. Uh, We have to go to another quick break, but stay tuned for more. What is a brilliant culture and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Are you meeting your sales goals? Or maybe your business plan could use a dose of the divine. Tune in to Divinely Driven Results with faith-based business coach Elise Smith on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Coach Elise Smith helps listeners get unstuck from their business plateau and become empowered through divine guidance. Build up belief in yourself and your dreams and learn business strategies that work for you for real lasting results. Learn more by visiting www.DivinelyDrivenResults.com. Stuck in a roundabout of dysfunction? Stop circling around difficult issues and find out what's been holding you back. Learn how to speak your truth to power with host Dr. Kathy O'Bear. Create real change with smart tools and smart strategies. No frills, no fluff, just life-changing conversations to help get you where you want to be. Extend your reach and become an agent for real change with Kathy O'Bear. For more information on Kathy and her work, please visit drkathyobear.com. That's drkathyobear.com. Are you ready to become an unstoppable force of love in the world? 
Then don't miss the Creative Empowerment Show, Invoking Radical Love with Rachel Chase live every month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Rachel shares tools, stories, and meditations to spark the flame of profound wisdom within you. If you want to awaken your superpowers and activate your heart, visit rachelchase.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Hi, everyone. I'm the host of Nothing But Now, Mindful Living with Dr. Mary Angela McGuire on Transformation Talk Radio. I share ideas, insights, and tools you can use to release yourself from fearful and negative thinking and live from a place of clarity and confidence. Please join me in each show where we challenge ourselves to change together. Please go to my website, mcguirelifecoach.com. That's mcguirelifecoach.com. See you next time. You're listening to an encore presentation from the Transformation Talk Radio Network. Welcome back to the Christine Eftrude Show. You know, I'm just so enjoying this conversation with Dr. Joe Dispenza. And you know, Joe. This hour is flying by, and I want to make sure people know how they can connect with you, how they can sign up for your program, where they can learn more. Sure. I mean, uh, I changed the whole thing around this past year because uh, I don't teach the progressive workshops, which are usually a Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, because uh, my passion and interest now is doing the week-long events. So, so we have these progressive workshops as an online course now, and um, those are with that course, you get an intensive course that's another eight hours, but it's a home study course for you to prepare yourself for the week long. So you can just go to my website at drjoedispenza.com and all the info's there if you want to if you want to uh, join us. Uh, and and uh, yeah, yeah, Facebook, whatever, you know, yeah. Instagram, or everywhere I guess. And if you don't remember how to spell his name, you Google a misspelling, you'll still find your way to his website, drjoedispenza.com. And I know you're coming up to my, you know, our end of, of the world here. You're going to be on Vancouver Island with some amazing people, Lee Carroll, Greg Braden, Lynn McTaggart, and Bruce Lipton on June 14th. Yes, they're all really dear friends of mine. And, uh, I was with Lynn in London just a little ways back. I uh-huh. had dinner with her and her husband, Bruce and Greg, or my brothers, and... Uh, uh-huh. We all kind of group together, so I'm looking forward to it in June. It'll be fun, a uh, beautiful time of the year to be up in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, it'll be chock full of knowledge and information. So yeah, I'm looking and, forward to it. And last I heard, that conference was growing, and, and uh, they were having to find some new venues for at least some of the, uh, the day-long conferences. Hmm, that's a good problem to have. It's a have, really good problem, and, and it's you know somewhat remote, but absolutely gorgeous up there. And if people want to learn more about that, go to shalohaproductions.com. Um, and also you can find that information on Dr. Joe's website, too. Okay, Joe, we've just got a few minutes left. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of what people, how people can take this from what they learn, with, with the, whether it's online or whether it's in person, and bring that into their daily lives beyond the meditation, beyond that time when they're focusing on that connection and that expansion and that surrender, how do they integrate it when they are, like, reacting in traffic or they're standing in the grocery store line um, and interacting with a, a, a loud baby? You know, it's like, how, how do you bring that into the moment-to-moment reality of our daily lives? Ah, well, it's a process. It's a process, of, it's a transition from the old self to the new self. And it's a process of trial and error. I can tell you that the moment you go unconscious, you're going to return back to the old self and things are going to become very predictable in, in our lives. But then you figure it out. You figure it out, like, where, at what moment did I fall from grace? At mm-hmm. What trigger? What person? What experience? Where'd the magic go? And then people that are on the journey that are really, really invested in this, 
still say, oh, God, I lost it right around when this happened with this person. Uh-huh. And then they start thinking, well, how can I do it better the next time when I see that person? How could I open my heart? How could I forgive more? How could I let go? How could I, how could I maintain a certain internal state? So it's a, it's a process. You, I, I, there's no failure here. There's mm-hmm. just another day mm-hmm. to get it right. And, uh, and I love just, that. No failure. Every single time you become conscious of your unconscious self, it's a victory. It's not a loss. It's a, this is a plane of demonstration. This is where we get to try out uh-huh. our divinity. This is, can't do, this is a stage. You can't do it without a body. You can't see a sunset. You can't hear a baby cry. You can't be stuck in traffic without a body. You need a body for uh-huh. all of this. So right. you, we signed up for this. So getting beyond the, the normal responses or the natural responses creates more of your ability to become supernatural. Mm -hmm. And if you keep doing that enough times, (laughs) you will become supernatural. And and you rely less on things outside of you to bring you joy, and you'll find it more from within you. And that's the moment you start feeling a great immense amount of freedom, and that is the beginning of unconditional love, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, Joe, so what you've talked about so far is just so incredibly inspiring about how people can transform their own lives. I'm curious. I know you're, you're, you're a visionary. How can people transforming their lives in this way affect our global situation? Well, I only have a few minutes to answer this, but um, gosh, I, I'm going to answer it on two levels. The first level is... Um, you know, if you question how do you become supernatural, you got to first start doing things that feel unnatural. Mm-hmm. That means when everybody's in fear uh-huh. and anxiety, that's the time to show courage. When everybody's angry and hostile, that's the time to show compassion. When everybody is rushing to compete to get to the top and racing, it's time to be still and let it come to you. And, and, and I think if we keep doing that over and over again, by, by demonstration, it gives people permission to begin to do the same, and I think that's mm. one way we change the world. The other way is just based on our experiment. We took 750 people in a room. We had 40 people in the front of the room wearing heart rate monitors to mm. measure their heart coherence. When you feel resentment or frustration or impatience, your heart beats very arrhythmically because it stimulates that autonomic response, but you're stepping on the gas and the brake at the same time. Mm-hmm. When you feel gratitude, appreciation, a love for life, a joy for existence, you can cultivate that inner state. Your heart gets very organized. So we had 40 people in the front of the room with their eyes closed. We had 750 people in the room changing their state. When the heart becomes coherent, it begins to produce a measurable magnetic field. That field is a frequency. That's energy. And all frequency carries information. So they laid the intent on that frequency that the people wearing those heart rate monitors, that their lives would be enriched, their bodies would be healed, that their dreams would come true and the mystical would find them. At the exact same time, at the exact same day, <laughs> during the exact same meditation, uh-huh. the majority of those people, all their hearts went into coherence at the exact same time, which means they felt love. Wow. So every the same person, time. The same at the time. same time. So we are connected by an invisible field of energy and that frequency that allows it to reach one another to affect their autonomic nervous system, their moods, their emotions, their, their temperaments, the way they think, all controlled by energy. So then if you get enough people doing that, you begin to, on the bus, on the plane, Uh traffic, uh, at a staff meeting, people start looking at you like, wow, you're different Uh because you're showing up unpredictable. But you're not doing anything else. It's your energy. And and I think that that becomes the way that we begin, um, another way we begin to change the world. Because every time you do that, every person that you connect to in a non-local way Uh can begin to tune into that as well. And there's great research to show that. It even affects the brain. You know, when you watch a horror show, a person you love is sitting on the opposite side of the room is experiencing the same brainwave patterns as you. So wow. the moment you start resonating in a greater uh, at a frequency of love or gratitude, uh, it, it affects others as well. Yeah, and so, you know, we, it's, it's not only inspiring for us to change as individuals, but it can have a ripple effect, and that's really exciting, Joe. Oh, mm-hmm. and, I, and I love that you've got all the science to back it up, but the... Real life stories are the things that really inspire people to, you know, open their minds to possibility. Yeah, yeah. I've witnessed some of that uh, uh, in the last six months that uh, I'm so overjoyed to see that, that this is actually happening in our lifetime. 
Joe, it's been a delight chatting with you today, and I, I love what you're doing, and I love the fact that you're going to be you know, in that conference with Greg Braden, Lee Carroll, Lynn McTaggart, and Bruce Lipton um, in mid-June, and I thank you for joining us here today. Uh, Christine, thank you for uh, being such a light for so many. Oh, and, and I uh, really enjoyed talking to you today. And again, if you want to learn more about Dr. Joe, go to drjoedispenza.com. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you'd like to empower yourself to step further into your vibration of change, please visit my website at christineupchurch.com where you can